Hello, hello! You are listening to CPA Career Path podcast with Rosie Flaherty, CPA MSA. This is episode number forty. We have a special guest, Michael, who I worked with when I was an auditor at CBS MHM. Hi, Michael. How are you? Rosie, how's how's it going? It's going Thanks. well. Doing great. Thank you so much for the interview today. Today we have a special guest, Michael. Actually, it's so funny that Michael and I, we both worked at CBS before when I worked in audit back in 2019, right? Yeah, that, that was back when I was uh, with CBiz MHM. We had our annual training in Kansas City, Missouri. And that was back actually when I was working in New York. So I got to actually then travel to Kansas City, which is in my home state of St. Louis of, of Missouri. And it was funny because all the people from the Northeast and all the people all, all over the country, they were there and they were like, oh, my gosh, where are we? I'm like, oh, we're right in the middle of the country, pretty close to my house. You know, a four hour drive. It was fun. But unfortunately, after that, I left CBS um, to move in tax. So <laughs> I'm not in on it nice. anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm technically not an audit either. I'm now in internal controls. So we both kind of like maneuvered our own path, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I know. Right. Before we uh, go deeper in your, your CPA journey, can you just introduce a little bit about yourself? Yes. So Michael Blood, um, 28, uh, born in St. Louis, Missouri. I grew up there. My parents were from there. So I'm, you know, I'm a diehard Cardinals fan and everything, but, um, uh, Cardinals baseball. I'm wearing the shirt right here. But uh, anyway, so I grew up in St. Louis. I went to the University of Missouri of Columbia um, and I uh, studied accounting there, uh, fell in love with it. Next thing I know, I'm working in public accounting, uh, doing that for a number of years. And then about a year and a half ago, I switched to um, now internal controls for uh, Bunzel Distribution North America. So um yeah, you know, a lot's changed from uh, from college until now. You know, it's really only been seven years, but it's uh, it's been it's been you know my own path. So let's just put it like that. Um, I know it sounds like a long time for seven years, man. Then when you look back, you feel like it just happened yesterday. A lot oh, of people yeah. feel like, oh my god, I couldn't believe that I work at CBS for that long, 2019, it's like long, long time ago. But and then I still keep in touch with a lot of people from CBS. And do you know that they just have a big merger with, is that Markham today? Or yeah, I think they acquired Markham. I, I saw that in, <laughs> in the news. So, uh, good for CBS, you know. Um, I still have some connections up there uh, in New York, CBS office. I actually went on a, a baseball trip to uh new york with my brother and we went to a yankees game but after the game there were a lot of cbiz people up there and we got to meet up after the game and i reconnected with um some old managers and partners up there because you know you never want to burn a bridge and you never know uh you know down the road who who will be involved in your life and uh, exactly going from the very beginning when you start your college who influenced you to study accounting? Yeah, so that's a good question. Um, so I went into uh, Mizzou, University of Missouri, uh, knowing I wanted, to, I wanted to do business, but not particularly accounting. Um, so, you know, you take your, your first couple of years, you take your business core classes, and then I took some electives on the side. Um, and I remember it was my sophomore year, uh, and I was taking accounting one and two courses, which were required for all business majors. And I just like really understood like the the accounting uh, language and the equations, you know, like I remember uh, like LIFO, FIFO, like calculation, stuff like that, where it just came so naturally, naturally to me. And then I ended up like help um, like tutoring and teaching some of my friends who were also in the in the course and like. I was kind of like the accounting guru in our group and um, basically then applied for the upper level um, accounting program, which is like the 150 hour program at Mizzou, which is uh, pretty competitive. And I got in and I remember when I got the 
uh, notification that I got in that summer in between sophomore and junior year, that was definitely a, a highlight. Um, and I was just so excited. And then the next three years in the accounting program, you know, it really challenged me because they, uh, you know, as you know, Rosie, accounting's not always, uh, it's not always a smooth ride because there's a lot of long hours. There's some complicated, um, language in there and jargon that, um, I'm still learning, you know, you never want to stop learning, but, uh, yeah. And then I, I was able to graduate within the program and get my master's and then it was on to studying for the CPA. So. Wow. So you chose accounting because you are good at it. Is that right? Yes. I mean, I, I had like, you know, finance classes, real estate classes, but then I just really kind of like, um, uh, just really connected with the accounting. And I, I, I don't know. I've always been a numbers guy. I love statistics. Uh, I just like, I used to like grow up reading the newspaper and I would look at uh, like sports statistics and box scores and just try to like, you know, analyze those and make sense of them because, you know, numbers don't lie. So maybe nope. I was just nope. trying to find some truth. So that's pretty interesting how you kind of like have math in your blood. I would say that. And so that just directed you to accounting. And you mentioned about the program. So your, your university has a program for 150 credit to make you ready for the CPA exam? That's correct. So in the state of Missouri, you need 150 hours um, to apply for the CPA um, in any way. So basically, uh, the University of Missouri has curated a course, um, and I should say curated many courses in a program that not only are you graduating with the 120, but they have another grad year of, you know, that another 30 hours of master's levels courses that, you know, they they basically gear you and get you ready for taking the CPA. Um, and even though I didn't, originally start in the state of Missouri with my career. Um, it was then when I eventually moved back to Missouri, I didn't have to, um, you know, get any additional hours. So I, I just got it all at once. That's actually a really smart idea. It saved a lot of time for you. You don't have to worry about uh, taking additional credits in order to just get the 150 credits. So after you graduate, did you take the CPA exam right away? Uh, yeah. So I took it, um, that summer of, let's see, 2019. That's when I started studying and whatnot. And, um, I basically used, uh, that summer and fall to study for the CPA exams. And I actually didn't pass my first couple of exams. I was really close. I was just, uh, I think my first one, I got a 70 and the next one I got like a 71 or 72. And I was, I was getting frustrated actually. Um, and then I had to change my study ways and my study habits. So. So talking about passing scores, I got audit for 73 and or 70, 73 and then regulation for 72 or something. And so when I, when I knew the scores, I was so mad. I was like, why it is so close. That just, I know. Just, oh my God. You mentioned about changing your study habit. What was your study habit before and then what's your study habit after that that helped you pass the CPA exam? Yeah, so I used Becker CPA. Shout out to Peter Olento. He's the man. I honestly started off, you know, reading and comprehending like the lesson or the chapter and then doing like the simulated, simulated longer questions and then the multiple choice questions and then doing eventually exams and Basically, I kind of like reversed it because I was thinking in my head, well, the exam itself, they're not asking for your reading comprehension. They're asking, I mean, more than, I mean, half the test is uh, multiple choice. So I actually went back to all the, the sections and basically changed the way, like I, I would use the multiple choice questions to study because a great way how Becker has the questions is that. Um, you know, for a question that has four different answers, even if you get it wrong or you get it right, it tells you the other 
three wrong answers that why it's wrong. So you can then go back, okay, like, okay, that's the reason why it was chosen, but then why? And then if I still didn't understand it, then I would go back to the lecture and read it. Now I would still, you know, skim the the chapters and whatnot and still, you know, read the the more complicated parts. But at the end of the day, it's like, it's not a reading comprehension exam. It's multiple choice. And then the sim, the sim questions, I should say. So. So you're saying that you just learn the materials based on doing multiple choice questions. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Trial and error and just, just, just churning and doing more and more multiple choice questions um, until my eyes were tired and then I had to go to bed. So a lot of long nights, a lot of weekends in, staying in and and, uh, you know, I think one of the hardest parts with the CPA exam is that it's just, um, it's a, it's a large chunk of time that you have yeah. to personally just block off. And I had to, you know, decline going out with my friends, decline social events, uh, you know, like, um, really just like make that the number one priority in order to pass this thing. Because if you just, you know, like, oh yeah, I'll get to it or like, Oh yeah, I might study here and there. You're probably not going to succeed because it's that difficult. So yeah. So how long did it take you to pass all four sections? Oh, um, well, I passed my first one that fall of 2019, and then uh, so I started full time that that fall um, at CBiz in New York, and then I guess I took my last one. Um, the following November or December, because I got my results like first week at first or second week of January in 2020. Wait, 2021. Yeah. So I, I really spaced them out. Um, so I actually took the, the exam seven times. I failed three times. Um, because, you know, the first two were no good. And then the, I took reg. Um, maybe like it was like the fourth or fifth exam I took and I, I barely missed that one too. So I didn't finally pass, you know, I didn't, I didn't take any exams that busy season of, of, uh, 2020. And then I kind of like used that summer and fall while COVID was going on you were, and you weren't really doing much. So I had time to study and, you know, pass the other two and, um, yeah. So it, it, it took a while. Um, I wasn't one of those persons that like, Hey, I'm going to get all done in nine months or eight months. Like that's not really how I work, but, uh, you know I, what? I'm happy that's past me, but, uh, what about you? <laughs> it's always so exciting when you just pass all four CPA sections and you do not have to worry about that. Those sections anymore. That's just such an amazing feeling. I'm just curious. What is the most difficult section for you it was probably i want to say reg just because i specialize in audit and assurance and basically you know i i got like a when i was in college i i took audit courses um and then i went into the audit insurance industry and then tax and regulation while i do like the business law part of it i've never really been a huge taxation guy um now I still do my own taxes. <laughs> like I still know what's going on, but it's like, I, I, and people ask me all the time, Hey, like, can you do my taxes? Or like, you're a CPA. You, and I'm like, you know, I'm, my specialty is audit. So I'm, I'm not really like, if you have some super complicated tax issue, I'm probably not your guy, but there's a lot of other people who would be well, uh, you know, that, that would be able to take care of that. So that's super, super common. Nine out of 10 people, when they come to me and say, hey, I have a tax question for you. You are a CPA. You may know this. That time I work in audit and I was like, yeah, I'm, I, <laughs> um, but not that deep. <laughs> yeah. Before we uh, move on from the CPA exam topic, I just want to see if you have any tips or advice for people who are studying for CPA exams right now. Yeah, my number one tip would be uh, focus on the multiple choice questions because you can learn a lot. And like I was saying earlier, 
even if you get it wrong, it's going to tell you the reasons it's wrong. And then if you're right, it'll tell you the reasons it's right. And you can just learn so much by doing those 30, 40 multiple choice questions every section. And that way, even if, you know, sometimes you come away reading the chapter and you don't really know, like, if you understand it or not, I mean, the multiple choice questions are going to show you. And um, yeah, so kind of like a reverse thinking of rather than starting from the material and then testing, but like actually seeing what the output is and then going back to the input. So that's interesting. That's very interesting study method. Because I have to read first and then understand and then do the multiple choice and then understand more about the concept of the topic. Instead, we like jump directly to the multiple choice and was like, what if I miss reading this section? What if I miss reading that section? (laughs) Yeah. And, you know, I, I would still skim and then do the multiple choice questions, but really focusing on the multiple choice questions was, uh, it helps me out. And I know everyone's study methods are different. Um, but sometimes I felt like I was taking too much time reading the lessons and not focusing on actually like being able to answer. And, and actually, it, it made things a lot quicker, too. So That's interesting. And I know that before you actually start working as a full-time job at CVS, you actually had two internships before that, right? Each internship. Correct, yep. Months. One internship is that at a small firm, and another internship I know you had at Deloitte. Correct. Yeah. So my my senior year of of college, um, basically there was this course in the accounting program where you had to have some type of work experience or an internship, and then you would kind of report what you learned, and uh, you know submit a, a large paper on it, and basically. Um, that was my first uh, dipping my toes into the audit and insurance industry. I worked at Anders CPA and Advisors in downtown St. Louis. Um, it was nice because when I wasn't in college, I would I would live in St. Louis with my parents, so I was able to commute to work that way. Um, and yeah, they're you know they are uh, a mid-sized firm. They're they're large for St. Louis. They're one of the largest CPA. Uh, firms in St. Louis. Um, however, they don't have like a, a national presence. Um, but I got to work on a lot of really cool um, local companies, you know, companies around the St. Louis region. Um, and really just kind of like that was my first busy season. So, uh, you know, I, I didn't really have um, uh, a choice not to learn things because I was just thrown in and it was just a, it was a really uh, engaging experience and getting to know like, hey, like during busy season, these are the hours we work. This is the effort we're putting in. This is, uh, you know, welcome to the show kind of. So how was that experience at Anderson firm comparing with your experience at Deloitte at the big four firm? Yeah, so um, Anders, a lot smaller clients, uh, more small mid-market. Uh, clientele. And then when I had my in, my audit insurance internship at Deloitte that summer, um, I focused on, I only, I, I was staffed on like three large clients the entire summer, the entire summer. So with Anders, I was working on different clients every two or three weeks um, and just filling the needs of a staff, account, a staff auditor at that time when um, with Deloitte, I, I, I was staffed on uh, some large pharmaceutical clients uh, here in St. Louis, and we're talking, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue if and more. So, uh, yeah, the teams were larger at Deloitte. Um, I would go to the site of one of the clients, and there'd be the partner, a couple managers, seniors, staff, like this whole crew. Um, and then we had like this giant, we had this big room to ourselves. It was just kind of the audit room. And then at Anders, it would be like more of like a team of like two, maybe three that would actually go on site. So um, a lot different feel in terms of like who I report to, what type of tasks am I doing? Um, but yeah, it was nice to see uh, and, you know, get both sides of the, of the coin, you know, it's a smaller and a larger firm. So 
Which one do you prefer at that time? Hmm. Uh, I liked both, and I'll get to that because so Anders was small, Deloitte was big, and then CBiz was in the middle. So it just kind of worked out, you know. Um, so I I liked it, you know both aspects, and then you know uh, then I I I applied and I I got an offer at CBiz later that fall or yeah the fall of my grad year. Um, And then, yeah, so they were, I think, the 10th largest accounting firm at the time. You know, yeah. Deloitte is always, like, in the top two or something like that. And then Anders was a regional firm. So, CBiz is kind of right in the middle. Wow. Good choice. Good choice. When you start at CBiz, you start as Associate One, right? Assurance Associate One? Correct, yeah. So, um, the audit teams there were basically... Um, I'd say like two or three associates, a couple seniors, a manager, sometimes a director and a partner. So once again, kind of a blend of what my prior experience was. But um, once again, I it was like I uh, I was just kind of like thrown into the the fire with uh you know all these clients I was working on, and um they really like once you. Uh, started at the firm, like yes, we had our training and whatnot, but the best way to learn is just like going to the client, you know, just communicating cool. with the client, and just yeah, just I remember it was like my second week, and they're like, hey, uh, and this was when I was living in in New York City. Our our office was in Midtown Manhattan, and they're like, hey, like we're gonna send you a couple of blocks up the street. Um, there's like this diamond company up there, so there's like a big you know diamond industry in Midtown, um, so. I went and just worked at uh, a diamond in a uh, diamond company for a couple of weeks. And there it was, that was my first experience right there. So already just getting, you know, boots on the ground. So. Wow. That, that's an expensive and fancy experience to, <laughs> to work in the diamond industry as a first year associate. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, it was really cool. I mean, you learn a lot and um, yeah, the great thing about CBiz is that they have uh They had a wider range of clients. Um, they basically had a lot, it, a lot of clients in like the garment industry because uh, it was in like the fashion district, kind of by Times Square in New York. So I also got to work with like luxury brands and um, shoe companies, and like I even did like an inventory count at like this like really nice like like dress, uh, like fan like fancy dress. Um, store and I'm like, I'm not really into fashion that much, but like here I am, like counting like these like, and you know evaluating like these you know super expensive dresses, and I'm like, oh my gosh! But um, I also got to work on some manufacturing clients, uh, some some te some tech clients as well. So just you know, kind of all over the place. But it was a good experience. So in the first year, can you demonstrate some main projects that you work on as a first year associate. Yeah, well, I mean, your number one goal, I feel as an associate first year is A, to learn, but B, to help the senior out because the senior is really running the show of making sure certain areas of the audit and work papers are getting done. Um, you know, managers at that time, I feel like are more like, you know, managing the budget and also seeing how much time is going into the different areas. And, and that's where the expertise is coming in. But as a first year, you're not really working on super complicated areas. Like I would do like kind of like bank reconciliations, uh, fixed assets, um, inventory, uh, maybe some accounts payable, but I wouldn't really be dealing with like, um, well, and I guess like prepaids as well. But I really wouldn't be doing uh, like, you know, uh, debt agreements or um, I guess like commissions and rebates um, and some complicated, uh, I guess, like revenue recognition. I would work on some like some uh, uh, 606 revenue work papers. But, um, you know, it, it wasn't. Uh, super complicated at first, um, as a first year, but obviously as you progress, 
then they start to give you the more difficult areas. So I like it how you still remember six oh six work paper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh this this interview is bringing up some memories. So you know, yeah, I a know time, a lot of time spent in Excel and um and whatnot. So. Yeah, I still remember when I was the first first year staff. I had to go to the client's office a lot, deal with a lot of paperwork, go through the information, and I was like, "Oh, this is really cool." But the, the <laughs> thing for me is that I work in private industry before I moved to public, so I kind of understand what's going on on the other side that we are audience. Uh -huh. So that's pretty really interesting. Say, oh yeah, I'm familiar with this, what they are doing, because I did this before. So that's that's pretty cool. For people who are listening to this conversation, for auditors, a lot of time we have to go to the client's office and we will communicate with the clients and go back to we may go back to the office to do some finish some paperwork, but the next day we're going to go to the client's office as well. So most of the time, the audit time will be at the client's office. I don't know, after COVID, did that change a lot? That changed entirely. Um, wow. Pre-COVID, pre -COVID, we'd you know, go to the on-site to the client. I would travel a lot. Uh, we had clients all throughout the country. Um, like I went to California a number of times um, and all around the Northeast area. Um, but it's ever since COVID, you know, teams have shifted to teams and zoom and, you know, all these other, uh, virtual meeting rooms that, um, honestly, they, they are very convenient and they're very helpful and you can share your screen, but then you kind of lose some of that, like, you know, uh, that conversation in person and kind of feeling things out and, um, you know, developing that relationship with the client. And sometimes people, you know, will tell you more in person because they trust you more rather than something over the camera. So, um, you know, it's, 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 it's good and bad, but you know, you just got to adapt in the industry and, and, and move on. So. Yeah. I still remember we tried to audit one client through the, through the zoom or teams at that time. And because we're not there to actually audit the work paper, so we asked the clients to download the financial statements from online QuickBook and then share the screen to show us from the moment you download to the moment you sent that file to us to make sure that the same file that makes sure they did not make any changes in advance before and then send a different file. So that was really cool to do audit during COVID or right after COVID. So moving on to the second year as an, an audit associate, what did you do differently in the second year? Um, in the second year, you know, you, you gain more responsibility. You start to take a little bit more complicated areas. You're actually, um, a lot of the times the point of communication would be the seniors and the managers talking to the client. Like I wouldn't really, you know, as an associate, I'd, I'd meet, I'd meet, you know, in group settings, but I wouldn't really meet one-on-one. -on -one. Um, the second year, you know, that's where a lot of companies are trying to like, Hey, like, do you want to be a senior? Like, do you want to take more and more, more responsibility? Um, you know, get the, you know, basically kind of like, um, take initiative and whatnot, not just wait for the senior to tell you to do something, but like, Hey, like this area needs some hours, this area needs some help. And just basically seeing those opportunities and, and taking them. And, um, basically in the second year, it's like, you're kind of like, all right, do you have what it takes to be a senior? So, um, you know, a very important transition year. And, and that really happened all during COVID. So a lot of it was virtual. Um, but, you know, it's that's kind of what we talked about. You just kind of have to adapt. And um, a lot of a lot of emails and Teams messages were were, were made. So or sent. Yeah. I, I agree. I agree. I forgot to ask you that what made you decide to take the job at CBS in New York that you have to move all the way to New York? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I always wanted to move to a big city. Um, and basically I, 
uh, I had my internships in St. Louis, but I was actually pursuing like, hey, like, do you have roles in New York? And um, uh, Deloitte at the time were like, no, like, you know, we recruit in the Northeast for that. Like, and basically I then went to the accounting career fair at, you know, University of Missouri that fall. And I would go around with kind of like each booth to national firms that I recognized. And I was like, hey, do you have an office in New York? Oh, you do? Okay, you know, let's talk. You know, where's my resume? Oh, if not, okay, no, I'm moving on. And <laughs> I and I just really developed, a, a, I kind of like hit it off with the recruiter at CBiz. Her name was Heather Brown at the time. Shout out to her if she ever watches. Um, but yeah, she was really helpful. And um, I visited New York uh, a couple of times and I, I went up there and I interviewed in person. It went well. And next thing you know, uh, that summer of 2019, I moved up to New York um, and it was it was great. Uh, I lived in Brooklyn, um, but then COVID happened that following spring and that March, you know, it, it, it really just changed everything. Um, moved back home to St. Louis eventually that fall. Continued to work for CBiz, and then uh, they kind of wanted me to move back up there once th once things were getting better in 2021. But I wanted to stay in St. Louis, so. So you intentionally look for the job in New York. It's not because that you got a job offer in New York and then you moved. That's a pretty good strategy. Yeah, yeah, it was it was New York or bust at that point. So. Wow. And so is that be was that because you moved back to your hometown and CBS wanted you to be back to New York? That's why you decided to leave CBS? Yeah, they, they wanted uh, people more in the office and they um, because things started to get better with, you know, vaccines and 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 regulations back in uh, 2021. And they're like, hey, and I, and at the time I was like. You know, the New York ch chapter had kind of sailed. I, I was settling in back at home. I was living with my parents. I was reconnecting with childhood, high school, and college friends. I was kind of like building my network back up in St. Louis. Um, not that it, you know, diminished that much when I moved to New York, but basically a lot of like reconnecting and, and discovering like, wow, like even though St. Louis isn't really the biggest city, um, it's not even close to being the biggest city at all. Um, there's like some really good people here and some good opportunities and, um, yeah, decided to stay in my hometown. So, 